I recently had the CIMT test that I've been encouraging viewers to get. Today, I'll talk about my results and an earlier CT angiogram and where I go from here. Stay tuned. First, let's get into some definitions. The Computed tomography, or CT angiogram, is a procedure that uses x-rays and contrast dye injection to create images of blood vessels and blood flow. They're used to diagnose and evaluate vessel disease, aneurysms, blockages, and other conditions. Now, the CT angiogram that I got was not of the heart. It was one that was taken during an episode of transient global amnesia, which I've put videos out on before. And it was geared towards really determining whether I was having a stroke, which fortunately I was not. And it's not the same test you might get if you were getting a heart-specific CTA, but it was still useful. The CIMT, or carotid intima media thickness test, is just what it sounds like. It measures the thickness of the intima and media within carotid arteries. It's non-invasive, harmless, at least to you physically. What it might do to your mental health if you get a bad result is a whole other story. I now have a CIMT from the past month and the CTA from 21 months ago, but in the same area, so I can make some tentative comparisons. This caveat is important though. It's okay to search the internet for certain level of understanding, at least to the level where if you get something wrong, your doctor can explain to you where you're wrong and you'll understand. You don't wanna to go to the doctor or specialist with so little understanding that you're so far off that you're not even wrong as the saying goes, meaning your questions make so little sense they can't even be meaningfully answered. So that's what we want to avoid. So let's look at the patient profile, the patient being me. The patient has a history of dyslipidemia. Dyslipidemia is like hypercholesterolemia plus triglycerides being measured with LDL values in 150 to 250 milligrams per deciliter, which is about 3.9 to 6.5 millimoles per liter for 37 years of his adult life. I count my adult life as 47 years. 37 years I had this high cholesterol. For a period of about 10 years, that other 10 years, I was on statins, but I became increasingly intolerant over time I was pre-diabetic for most of the last 20 years or so, but it was never really treated. It was never really brought to my attention. I only know this by looking at past blood test results. Otherwise, I would have been oblivious to it and how important it is to my health. Patient, me, I'm now 67 years old. The high LDL and pre-diabetes would predict an arterial age for me of about 75 or more years, according to mainstream medical wisdom. And when I say this, this is not a formal thing. I just Googled it and said, hey, Google AI, a 67 year old with this history of high cholesterol and prediabetes, what might his arterial age be? And it came back with, well, probably over 75 years. So let's first look at the CTA results. Here's the report from the hospital. And we're gonna concentrate on the CT angiogram in the neck area. And you can see there's some starting statements, the aortic arch and origin of major cervical vessels, left side of three vessel aortic arch, that's normal. The term arteries are patent, means they are clear, the ones they were talking about there. So let's look now though at the carotid arteries that were tested and in every case it said there was no stenosis, occlusion, or dissection. And at the bottom here, you can see what their terminology means. Mild is less than 50% stenosis. I'll get to what stenosis is in a moment. Moderate is 50 to 70% and, and all of that. They didn't say what no means. I would have thought no means, hey, there's absolutely none there. But after doing a little bit of research on this, the no probably means it's undetectable, which may be just under 30%. Zero to 29% was considered that it might not be detectable by this test. That seems a little high to me, but that seems to be what the consensus is, so we're gonna go with it. So let's look at these definitions. Stenosis is the irregular narrowing of an artery's opening. This is a picture of stenosis on the right. That is classic stenosis. Occlusion is when stenosis gets complete or, as we'll get to in a little while, if a clot breaks up and totally blocks an artery by way of that mechanism. Those are both occlusion. And dissection is a tear in the lining of the artery which causes stenosis or occlusion. The tear in the artery lining is an injury. Plaque starts to develop around that injury as a 
part of the healing process, but then we have the problem of the plaque accumulating. So that's what these three terms mean. Another interesting thing that came from that report amongst a much larger write-up is said, the patient has severe reactions to statins will hold. They weren't going to give me statins. I was in the emergency room. I couldn't form short-term memories. I don't know if my wife told them this, if they found it in my records, or they simply asked me, since I have no memory of those eight hours. If they asked me, I would have told them, no, I can't take statins. So their reaction was, oh, we're going to respect that, and we're not going to give this patient statins. Now, there are some people who can always find a dark side to every statement. So if I was the type of person to do that, which of course I'm not, I'd point out that this statement basically says that their standard treatment in this circumstance is the wonder drug of statins, even though their own test results indicate there's no reason to give them. So that was the CTA. Let's move on to the more recent CIMT, which is really more geared towards specifically what I'm looking for, and that is what kind of cardiovascular event risk do I have? I've labeled this the good, the bad, and the ugly. First, let's have an overview of it. CIMT measures the intima media thickness. That's what the IMT stands for. And the intima is the inner lining structure, pointed to in blue here. The media is the cells between the intima and the outer layer, called the adventitia, if I've pronounced that right. The adventitia is the outer layer, shown in green, and plaque forms in the intima in response to inflammation or injury, thus increasing the intima media thickness. I found it interesting that I was told by all sources it's accumulating in the intima. It looks to me like you could say it's actually accumulating between the intima and the media, forming something there, but they consider it as part of the intima in this case. And what can happen is a rupture can occur in the intima, which exposes the plaque to the lumen. The lumen is the clear, the area that the blood is going through. This eventually can lead to a thrombosis, which means a blood clotting of the plaque that is now exposed to the blood flow. And if that breaks away and lodges in the heart, we get a heart attack. If it lodges in the brain, we get a stroke. In the carotid arteries area, I would imagine that a stroke might actually be the more common result of this. But that is the evolution of how these cardiovascular events can occur, not just from this in the carotid arteries, but in any arteries. So here's the good that I got out of this report after I had the CIMT and I got the report. Despite the expectation based on the patient history that informal 75 plus years expected arterial age, my arterial age was estimated at two years younger than I really am, which was in a way a little disappointing. I was hoping to do better, but I'm 67 and it tells me I have the arteries of a 65 year old. A little bit of comfort there. Another piece of good news is that four of the six carotid arteries that were measured by this test had at most subclinical plaque development, not considered dangerous at all. So that was good. They were clear. And here's an example of it. Here is the right common carotid artery, which was one of those that was shown to have no plaque accumulation. And you can see the dark area is where the blood would flow. The arrow is pointing at the intima. It could just as easily have been pointed to the lower one where I think the structure is more obvious, but you can see the structure in there. I'm not specifically trained to look at sonar images, though I did work on sonar systems for a lot of my technical career. So I am used to looking at these a little, though I would yield to people who are trained in this to interpret this a little more concisely. If we look at the artery, now we're looking on it down the artery, so to speak. So instead of looking at it on the side, this is the right carotid bulb on the left, the side view of it, and looking down the artery is the right carotid bulb. And you can see the intima structure there, and this is also one that was not considered to be blocked. So this is a very clear artery artery from what I see on these images. So here's some of the bad news. One of those six arteries exceeded the threshold by 0.1 millimeters, and the plaque in it was categorized as heterogeneous, as opposed to soft plaque or echogenic, which is hard plaque. And you'd prefer, if you have plaque, that it be echogenic. Now, the measurements that exceeded the threshold, they go through the whole artery and they find the largest measurement they can find, and they say that is the area of concern. And if it exceeds the threshold, then that gets flagged. So I did have one artery where it exceeded the threshold by a tenth of a millimeter, if you can even picture that. The entire width of the artery is about five millimeters, a half a centimeter. So that's very small, but actually kind of big when you think of it in terms of it being just an artery inside your body. So we're talking about a tenth of a millimeter out of a 
potential growth area is the way I'll put it of about five millimeters. So here we can see that this is the right carotid bulb on the left, which I've already shown compared to the left carotid bulb, which was the one that exceeded by a tenth of a millimeter. And these pictures were taken probably at slightly different angles, so it appears a little fuzzy. But the point is the green arrow on the right side is showing that slightly thickened intima media. So that's where that comes from. The other bad result, I'll call it, that I had was that the overall average intima media thickness of the common carotid arteries, which is how they estimate this risk, indicated moderate risk despite my arterial age this thickness still has me at a moderate risk. The arterial age would have to be 58 for this to go down into the normal range. Really, this is a consequence of aging. If you age normally, your arterial age matches your chronological age, then once you hit 58, you're moving up into the moderate risk category almost by definition. This value can improve with lifestyle changes. Now let's get to the ugly because there were some concerning findings. First of all, there's at least one spot in my left internal carotid artery that exceeds the threshold substantially. Plaque is considered heterogeneous, which is better than soft, not as good as completely echogenic or all hard. Echogenic, meaning it can produce echoes when the sound hits it, it'll show up as a brighter spot on the image. Whether this is from a traumatic event or was caused by or even led to the transient global amnesia episode, I'm not sure, it may have nothing to do with it, but that's really less consequential. It is what it is. I've got to work with the doctor to stabilize the plaque and reduce the risk because with something like this, that is the thing that is going to reduce the risk is stabilizing the plaque. The risk is out there. There's at least a bit of the intima that's pushing into the lumen, into the blood flow area from all the plaque underneath it. Can't get rid of that plaque by most conventional means. If I can just get that to stabilize, I can at least reduce the risk in that area. Another thing about this reading is, I know it's localized and not symmetrical. In other words, it's not around the whole circumference of the artery because if it was, there's no way I could not have significant stenosis or even occlusion. The important point is that the lack of a CT angiogram detectable stenosis is good, but it's not sufficient to guarantee cardiovascular health. You still may have intermittent spots of this plaque-filled intima media pushing into the lumen. So that is an area of concern. The summary report gives the maximum intima media thickness in each artery. That doesn't tell me whether it's a single localized problem or could be just the largest of several sites. Think of the Hawaiian island chain where you've got the big island and if you only measure that and ignored all the rest of the islands, you wouldn't get a full picture of what the whole state looks like. This is why it's important that you don't just go with the random images they send you in the report as for instances, really have to have the doctor who can look at all the images if they're available from the lab that did this analysis and tell me how much of a problem do I really have? Did I suffer some particular trauma or large inflammatory event in that artery only? Or is this more systemic in that artery? Given that it's not found in most of the other arteries, I suspect that there may be others here because the injury was probably not totally localized, but this is my body's response to some injury that I somehow sustained inside that particular artery. At least that's my working assumption. Important to note that at least if I'm wrong, the doctor can explain it to me and I'll understand why I'm wrong on that. So for my closing thoughts, you know, after I got this report and I, as I put it to the medical technician who conducted the test, after I was done breathing into a paper bag and relaxed, I sat back and I looked at the results objectively. I discussed them with her. We've been brainwashed to believe that cholesterol necessarily leads to blockages. Now that may be an overinterpretation in the collective popular consciousness and perhaps Perhaps typical PCPs don't really believe it. It's absolutely that cut and dried. But I not only had high cholesterol until the past five years, based on circumstantial evidence like high trigs and low HDL, it was probably consistent of low quality pattern B LDL. Yet most of my carotid arteries are in pretty good shape for my age. Some viewers have suggested that my 10 years on statin use probably helped, but even at best, the benefits relative to plaque formation that statins provide is the slowing, not so much the reversing of the accumulation, except possibly under the highest of doses. There are some studies that showed some small amount of reversal, but in general, it's conflicting evidence. 
Uh, more importantly, statins can stabilize, calcify soft plaques into the harder plaques, which is one of the reasons some statin-hesitant doctors will still prescribe statins in certain circumstances. So I maintain that my current condition is still based on 37 or more years of high cholesterol. And for all I can determine, the area of concern could have originated fairly recently. The important point I made at the start still holds true. Yes, do your research, watch YouTube videos, read journal articles. I'd watch out for the popular press articles because they oversimplify and can quite often be misleading. Do it with the purpose of gaining enough understanding to ask the right questions, not imagining that you're gonna have all the right answers when you bring this to your doctor. And then of course, bring it to your doctor. So that's what I have on this topic. If you enjoy this content, please like, share, subscribe, and comment on this topic or others you'd like me to cover. And if you haven't seen this video, I recommend you take a look at it now. Thanks for watching.